I think the other thing that doesn't get talked about enough with what an art degree can do for someone is that art degrees are gonna teach problem solving and they're gonna teach those perceptual skills. So even if you go out and don't get a job that's necessarily 100% you know, drawing, painting, sculpting, or something like that, you're gonna excel at whatever it is because you're gonna be able to be creative and solve problems that maybe other people can't. Um, you're gonna look at a problem differently because you're, you've been used to being in the studio. So it helps in almost every field to be able to do what we do. The faculty are practicing what they preach. And that for me was the number one thing is that the instructors here are making work, they're exhibiting work. They're out in the community. They're not just showing up, teaching their, their class and then going home and not doing any kind of art making. And to me, that's far above many of the other reasons why you might wanna do it is just they're working artists and you wanna be around working artists. Hi, I'm Robert Bean, and I am an instructor of figure drawing. And today I'm gonna spend some time with you and talk about uh, one of the things that I don't think gets talked about enough when we look at how artists create their work. And that's the idea of taking a look at preparatory work. All the stuff that goes into creating a drawing or a painting or something beforehand, the little sketches, the designs, the things that allow us to figure out problems ahead of time, the things that allow us to make decisions that make for a stronger piece down the road. And there are a lot of things that we can use as an artist, tools that we have, to uh, work through this process. So I want to talk about some of those with you today. Um, I'm going to demo a little bit. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples based on the skeleton we have here in the background and show how composition kind of works with these tools. But if at any time during this process you have a question, um, something you don't understand, please put it in the chat uh, and I will try to answer it as fast as I can uh, and make sure that you're not lost in, in what I'm talking about and, and have a good understanding of what's going on. So when we talk about creating a piece of work, a lot of people think that you just sit down and simply draw what's in front of you. And while that is one aspect to art, um, it's responsive drawing. I simply sit down take a look at what's in front of me and try to draw it. There's also the idea of composing pieces. How do I create a, a really finished piece, a polished piece, something that maybe has a complicated composition? It's rare to just sit down and get that right the first time out. And if you've ever tried to draw or paint before and you've run into that problem where you're six hours into a painting and you realize you've really screwed up the composition or something else, then a lot of the things that I'm going to go over today I think will be a big help for you in solving some of those problems before they happen on the final piece you create. So there are four things that I tend to use as an artist in this preparatory approach. And the first is what we call a thumbnail sketch. And a thumbnail sketch is essentially a very small uh, almost abstract sketch that allows me to see the composition very quickly. It has very little in the way of detail. Um, I'm probably not putting any kind of light and shadow or anything like that into it. I simply want to know where elements are going to be placed on the image plane. And thumbnails are great because I can create a whole lot of them on one sheet of paper and start looking at different compositions until I find one that I think is the strongest that's going to make the best work. Once I've done that, I might use what I call a rough. And a rough sketch is one that's going to take one of those designs from the thumbnail sketch, and it's going to end up uh, starting to, it's going to expand it, make it a little bit bigger, and it's going to start to put some of those other things in there, some of the details, to make sure that that design works at a bigger level. Uh, thumbnails are so small that sometimes you see them at that small scale and they look great, but when you blow them up, they don't look so good. So having that second stage of a rough that allows you to go in and say, hey, this still looks good when it's bigger, is a big help for me as an artist. The other two things that I might use would be a color study or a value study. Both of these allow me to go in and check what I'm planning to do with the work in terms of color, color balance, um, making sure that I have a harmony 
or something like that in place that would allow me to create a, a pleasing image or perhaps create something that's more jarring depending on what I want to create with the work I'm looking at. And the value study maps all my light and shadow. It allows me to see where contrasts might approach or where they're going to appear um, and how that affects the composition overall. So if I use all four of these things in conjunction with each other, by the time I get to the canvas that I'm going to paint or I get to the piece of paper where I'm going to do the final drawing, I've probably got a good roadmap for what it is I'm trying to do, and I've probably solved a lot of problems, which means that the final piece doesn't have as many mistakes. I'm not making as many corrections on it, uh, and it comes across as a much more solid and in-depth kind of piece. It's going to feel like it was done exactly the way it was supposed to, and it makes it look like everything was intentional, which is what I want to happen in the piece of art. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start with the thumbnail. And I'm going to show you how that process works. Um, and then we're going to take a look at the rough. I'm not going to do a color study or a value study. That's a little bit too much uh, for today. But when we look at the thumbnail and the rough, I think you're going to get an idea of how this process starts and works. And it'll probably end up being something that'll help you a lot in the studio when you're working. So a thumbnail is essentially going to be often a single page of multiple drawn frames. Now the thing you have to remember with a thumbnail sketch is you want to keep it within the ratio of the final piece. What I mean by this is if my final piece is going to be a square then my thumbnail also needs to be a square of the approximate same size. The problem is, if I don't make them the exact same kind of ratio, then the smaller square will distort when I try to put it on the final piece. So if I were to do a thumbnail in a rectangle like this, and then I wanted the final piece to be in this square, notice how the rectangle only takes up this much of that square. So I've got a problem. I'm either going to expand the image to fit the two sides, in which then it's distorting. Or I put it in the middle and I have to figure out what to do with those two spaces on the edges. So when I look at doing a thumbnail, I want to make sure that ratio fits. Now when I do thumbnails, I tend to do thumbnails that have many, many rectangles on a page. So I might do eight to a sheet. I might do a dozen to a sheet. I might do two or three sheets that end up being a dozen on each sheet. Whatever it takes for me to be able to get a bunch of designs down for me to pick from is what I want to do with this. So let's take a look at the skeleton. And we're going to kind of go through this process so you can see how it works. When I look at the skeleton over there, I can see the skeleton itself, and I can see everything in the space around it and behind it. So when I look at the skeleton, I can actually see the images on the wall behind it, which create kind of squares or rectangles. I can see the gray of the wall. Um, so I've got all this stuff kind of happening. So what I want to do is I want to look at the subject, the skeleton, and I want to start to create small, almost abstract sketches that fit within these boxes. So from here, I might decide that I want to do a close-up of the skull. So I'm going to draw very quickly just a simple kind of circle, and then maybe a couple of small rectangles that represent kind of the, the clavicle and then the rib cage below it. And then I see from this angle that I have a drawing behind it that basically frames the skull with a rectangle like so. So you can see that this is a really simple, flat, abstract design. But it tells me where everything goes. When I look at it, I know that this is the skull right here. This is the rib cage. And that's that drawing in the background. And it's telling me that I basically have element A, B, and C 
creating a strong compositional triangle that'll work with this design. But that's just one of all of these. So I might decide that I'm gonna try again with, that I wanna move over and put the clavicle on this side, drop the arm bone down, see the rib cage over here, and the skull here, and then I see a little bit of one of those pieces of paper back here. Also, when you're thinking of these designs, these thumbnails, you want to also be thinking in terms of not just kind of the same depth. Think of it like a camera. Am I zooming in? Am I zooming out? So I was kind of zoomed in on these two. So maybe now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And on this one, the skeleton will actually be much, much smaller. And I'll see much more of the background happening in that composition. And then I might decide that I'm going to, on the next one, I'm going to put the skeleton up high in the corner, but still kind of zoomed out. And just see a little bit of that drawing there, and then there's a table in the background that I can see from my angle. See how this process works? By going through these different steps, if I were to draw the skeleton on a large sheet of paper like this, I've created that same kind of ratio rectangle, and then I'm going in and putting these different designs in each one of these. By doing this, I give myself options as the artist. I don't have to just take the first thing that I sit down and do. I can pick through these and say, I like this one over this one. Um, this one's maybe stronger than another one. Um, and that is a good thing for me because it means I'm not gonna waste a lot of time with expensive art materials. Um, a lot of time in the studio working on a piece that's not gonna work the way I thought it was gonna work. And I'm not gonna have to make a lot of corrections or paint over something or draw something out and all that. I'm gonna solve some of those problems here. So when I put these thumbnails down like this, it's allowing me to see all the different options I have with what I'm looking at over here. Um, let's take a look at the skeleton. I'm gonna kind of move over and take a look at this. When we look at the skeleton here and the way it's kind of framed, this is one of those things where I have to think when I'm looking at the rectangle, where am I cutting off the skeleton? Am I cutting it off here where this would be the top of the page and this would be the side of the page? Am I cutting it off here? Am I moving out where I see this much or is it this much? Where am I zooming in? Where am I zooming out? I have to be able to see that visually. And if I can see that, then I can put it on the paper and come up with that composition. And when I see all of the skeleton, I'm also seeing all the things that are happening behind it too, which also fit within that. So if I'm kind of cropping the skeleton here, I'm probably seeing a couple of these drawings in the background, which are gonna put rectangular shapes in that space around the skeleton. So you can use something like a viewfinder, um, which is basically, you can even make one out of cardboard or mat board or something, where you simply cut a rectangle or a square out of it and you hold it up in front of your eye and you look through it just like you would look through a camera and it would show you the framing around the skeleton. And you can turn it to fit what you're trying to do with the paper that you're working on. Once I've gone through this process and I've found a bunch of different ways that I want to try to draw this guy, then I'm going to move to that other stage of trying to do something like a rough. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, what's the question? No, it's artists and a lot of different media will use this. That's a good question. So, uh, Artists that draw will use it, painters will use it, um, even uh, um, designers will use it a lot. In fact, that's actually where I, I kind of learned it was actually through design, um, like graphic design and stuff like that. They'll take the time to plan out their designs and look at the way it's gonna look in the format that they're doing. So when I take a look at uh, what I'm doing with these thumbnails, you don't have to be an artist that just works in charcoal and draws the figure. This can be used with oil painting, with acrylic painting. It can be used with watercolors. It can be used with almost anything 2D. Um, 
I'm not sure that the 3D artists use it quite as much. I think they have a different kind of approach to what they do. But in the 2D format, thumbnails really is great for that idea of composition. Okay. Um, when we go to the rough, what I'm going to do is I have to make a decision which of these works for me. So I take a look at these and I say, I really like number three. This is the one that, to me, is the most interesting composition of the ones that I've thumbnailed out. So that's the one I want to work with. When I move it to that rough stage, what I'm doing is I'm trying to take this small sketch and I'm trying to blow it up. Not as big as the final piece, but I want to blow it up bigger. The reason I want to do that is that at this small stage, this looks good. But when I blow it up big, all of a sudden, this space right in here is going to be much bigger. And when it gets bigger, it's a lot of empty. And so I need to know what it's going to look like at a bigger size. Uh, I did a piece um, a few years back where I actually got to draw on the walls uh, of, a small, of a gallery in a museum. And I did a bunch of preparatory work. And I did it all at sizes closer to this. And this is a giant wall that I had to draw on. And once I started putting it on the wall, small spaces like this were really big, like five feet long, and they were empty. And I had to figure out how to solve that problem. So putting this thumbnail down and then doing another rough and then a bigger rough helps you to start to see some of those issues. So let's take this design and blow it up. So now I'm going to make Much bigger rectangle, but still trying to keep in that same ratio. And then I'm going to go in and start to sketch out skeleton once again. And I'm going to see those drawings that are behind. See how they kind of fit on the wall actually a little one that I missed. OK, so now I've got those same kind of abstract shapes, those same abstract elements put down within a much larger rough. But at this point, I can start to put some details in. I can actually decide that I'm going to give the skeleton some features so that it starts to look a little bit more like a skeleton. I can go in and start to put in some of those like individual vertebrae, some of the other bones. And I can start to put, if I want to, I could combine that value study with a rough a little bit too. So I could come in and say, you know what? I see this kind of gray happening in this space. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some of that in and see how this looks when I've got the bright white of the drawings and the darker gray of the space kind of behind the skeleton. So you can see that it's starting to come together. It looks a little bit more like a drawing at this point, doesn't it? It doesn't look like a little quick, fast sketch. It's starting to look like a composition. And this is what I want to come out of this. Now, as an artist, when I work, one of the things I like to do at this point is make notes. Um, that's what sketchbooks are for. That's what these preparatory works are for. So I might come in and start to actually literally write a note and say that, you know, make the bones brighter or something. Um, I might say that I need to create a gradient of tone in this section. What I mean by that is I want it to be really dark and get brighter as it comes down so that it makes this look a little more atmospheric. So the issue I now see with this is that the drawings, all this, just look big and empty. 
So what I need to do is figure out how to kind of fill that space. And so I could, if I wanted, go back and say, I really see you know, the skull here, but that drawing is of an eye behind it, so I'm gonna put some of that in there. Okay, what's the question? Uh, the question is, how long have I been drawing and have I always wanted to be an artist? I can't actually ever remember not drawing. Um, I've been drawing since I was a little kid. Um, I fell in love with it at an early age. And um, I actually knew, I always loved drawing, but I knew that I wanted to be an artist around eight or nine years old when I discovered comic books. And I realized, oh, someone actually makes a living at this. And I really liked comics, and I loved the way the panels worked and the drawings. And so to me, that was what got me going into art. Um, and then I ended up growing into a fine artist out of that and having exhibitions of my work and all that. So yeah, um, I knew early on and wanted to, to be an artist as long as I can, almost as long as I can remember. Um, not to say you can't find that passion later. Uh, everyone comes to it at their own kind of pace, their own time. Um, good question. So once I get into doing this and I start to see that I've got these other elements that I want to put in from the drawings kind of in the background. And I can kind of see what's happening back here. One of the problems I'm starting to notice with this is that even with these drawings put in here, there's a lot of, of white space in contrast to like the gray or the, this kind of tone that I'm doing here. And so if I'm gonna continue to put this kind of heavy dark here, I probably need to figure out a way to make the skeleton pop forward, because that's really what I want to be the subject, right? Which means I probably need to put some kind of value across the drawings in the background as well, so that the skeleton starts to really appear in relation to that background. This is also, when I said notes, this is one of those things where I might need to decide how I'm gonna render the skeleton. I might have to, if I'm doing this whole drawing in charcoal, does that mean that I am gonna tone the whole paper and use an eraser to draw in the brights and the highlights? Um, or am I going to go ahead and use kind of a linear method like this where I'm outlining everything? What am I doing to make the skeleton come forward? How does he pop forward? If I can't answer some of the questions at this stage, then I might need to rethink what I'm doing. I might need to go back to the thumbnail process and say, okay, let me try a different design and I'll enlarge it to a rough and see if it works better. Um, or do I need to change the setup that I have? Do I move the skeleton around? Do I change what I'm looking at? Um, what do I need to do to make it work to be what I want it to, to do? But if I'm doing it like this, you saw how fast I was able to put this together. I didn't just spend 10 hours in the studio making a drawing and then realizing that's not doing what I want it to do. I did this in about five minutes and realized I've got some issues with this. I'm gonna have to go back and rework the process. And one of the great things about using thumbnails and roughs and these preparatory works is that you can take them and look at them as a whole. I can sit down, if I do a dozen roughs and 24 thumbnails, I can sit down and look at all of them together. And what I'll often see when I do that is that, oh hey, I really, really like the way this aspect looks. I really like the top part. I like the way I'm doing the drawings on that darker wall. I don't like what the skeleton's doing right now, but maybe in the third or fourth rough I do after this, I do like what the skeleton's doing. Then I can go back and say, let's compare and contrast these. Let's take a look at them and see, can I take this element from this one over here and move it into this drawing with these? Um, if you guys have questions, uh, please type them in the chat and uh, and please ask questions. This is a good time to ask questions and, and get feedback.
Um, when I move the, the skeleton or I start to combine these different roughs, um, is there a question? So, okay. Uh, when I start to combine these, these roughs, uh, I might come up with a piece that ends up being more like what I want it to be. I can work the process. And that process helps me solve things. Now, this isn't something you might use every single time. If I'm working from in, in like life drawing and figure drawing, and there's a model, the model only sits still for so long, and I don't have the time to work through this process. I'm gonna sit down and just draw what I see. But working this process makes me better at composition so that when I am drawing from life like that, I'm able to more quickly and accurately decide, oh, okay, I'm gonna put the model skeleton over on this side and frame the composition in that way with the skeleton or the person on the model stand. Because I'm used to doing this process and I'm seeing more and more compositions and getting better at it. Uh, the question is, did my parents support my decision to be an artist and have that conversation go? Um, my parents were very supportive when I was young, uh, getting me into art classes. Uh, and, and kind of under, being understanding with, with um, that I had a passion for this. When I got to graduating high school and going to college, it was a little bit different. Um, I ran in a little bit into that bias of, well, now you've got to go get a real degree and a real job and a little bit of that, but I stuck with it, and I have a career as an artist. So it, it wasn't that they didn't exact, that they didn't support me, it's that they wanted to make sure I was, you know, I had a future in front of me, and they didn't quite understand, I think, how art could be that. Um, but, you know, they're very supportive now. They understand it. Uh, I think sometimes you have to be kind of stubborn in this career. You have to say, this is what I want. I'm going to make it happen. And you have to be a self-starter. That's another thing. As an artist, no one's going to tell you to get up and go in the studio and make your work. You've got to do it. So that's what you want to end up doing is develop that kind of self-discipline to do this. When we take a look at how the, the rough works, I can then take something like this and I could put color into it. So I could copy this over and over. And it doesn't have to be exactly the same every time. But I could copy this and then I could basically decide that this would be value and this would be color. So I could go in and start to put, you know, shadows on this and look at how the values are going to create a change. And then on this one, I might make this like a bright red or something and just see how the color harmony kind of works. But each of these together starts to give me an idea of where I'm going with the final piece. And that's what I want to end up being able to create is a solid, um, competent, well put together image, and I want to solve all my problems using these preparatory works before I get to the final canvas or piece of paper. Does anyone have any last minute questions on that? I do not have a YouTube channel yet. Good question. Uh, the question is, what did I mean by moving the skeleton forward? Uh, shading, value, that sort of thing. That's, that's pretty much it. What I'm wanting to do is I want to create a separation for, of the skeleton from the background. So I want the skeleton to pop forward. I'm probably going to do that by use of value or color um, or high contrast, something like that. Good question. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I hope this was enjoyable and you guys learned a lot.